Good evening and greetings to all of you. I am happy to come once again after a while live through Facebook. So today I just wanted to speak or discuss on a small topic but which is very important. As we are living in the time of uh, COVID-19 since March middle and there is a kind of fear, fear of death still prevails. The numbers of cases are increasing, the number of death due to COVID is also on the increase. So we need to understand and gain strength in the midst of this. So as I know in the introduction, I know the only one message which heaven sent by the Lord God who created heaven and earth is a singular message that is Jesus the Christ. He is the person. His name is also Word of God. So God sent message is the word of God which is a person ultimately whose name is Jesus the Christ and also he created mankind and he gave them a constitution written document that is also the word of God in my view the only word of God is the Bible which begins with Genesis and ends with Revelation which is the fullest form of revelation from God. We don't need anything else beside this to know God and His will and His plan because it deals with eternity past and it takes us into eternity future. But now, as I have written down in the topic life and death and choice is yours. The Bible explicitly says and also the purpose of the Bible, one of the main purpose of writing or handing over the Bible, the word of God to the mankind is that we may choose life. God also recommends us to choose life. So I'll read a uh, few words and then we shall go into this one. I have taken from the book of John. John the Apostle penned it, but the author is the Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God. It is says the purpose of this book very clearly says John chapter 20, 30, and 31. The purpose of this book. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book. 31. But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that by believing you may have life in his name. So these two verses emphasize the purpose of this book. If we see, I'll just love to read another two verse from the Old Testament book, that is the Deuteronomy chapter 30, 19 and 20, wherein it's at the end of the book and Moses before he hand it over to Joshua, he writes, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore, choose life. The command is choose life that you and your offspring may live. Loving the Lord your God obeying his voice and holding fast to him for he is your life and length of days that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers to Abraham 
to Isaac and to Jacob to give them. So you can see that one. We know the God has identified with the mankind, especially the patriarchs who are Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Even everyone, most of them know the Abrahamic religion or Judaism and Christianity, Islam and they so. But God did not create religion. That is a man-made way of climbing back to God. But God sent or given only message is a person who is his son Jesus the Christ. So now I have read four verses, two from Old Testament, Deuteronomy and two from the book of John, the very important epistle. The end of it, it says, we have already read that one. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And the previous verse is said, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of disciples which are not written in this book. Also, the writer or the one who has penned it, he says, if we have to write everything what Jesus has done, the whole world cannot contain it. So what has been given unto us is to inherit the life in Christ. So we will see a little about it. We know the mankind is not a, we are fighting for our right and they, we, they are calling it as a racist. We divide mankind by color and linguistic style, many languages and many colors and regional wise and caste and so many other way that we say. But mankind is a single race. God has created man from only one person whose name is Adam. Then where the racism is coming from? We see today the whole world is under uh, tumult and it started in U.S. and it is spreading across to all the other countries. So mankind is a single race. The truth is there is one God between mankind and him and there is only one mediator. Why mediator was essential? Because mankind has fallen by deception and transgression. That means the day that you violate my command, you shall die. Or the day that you eat the fruit thereof, that is your choice by choice, Adam and Eve has chosen the Satan, the devil's recommendation. They believed the lie and they deceived. So the day they believed the lie, the fall of mankind came. So now is the time that you have to believe the truth. How you exercised your free will by thought, purpose and action, you believe the lie. Now God has kept before you life and death and the Bible very clearly says you choose life. So you have to choose life by your thought, by your decision or purpose and by your action. You have to choose life. Uh, that is why the Lord God said, the day that you eat the fruit thereof, you will die. But you may presume where Adam and Eve, they died. Yes, they died. They lost the life, higher order life, or they lost the glory. Falling of mankind is falling the fall of mankind is otherwise they have fallen from the glory wherein God has set them. That is what exactly the fall. And now every single person is bonded. The evidence is he is a sinner. The sinner, O-S-N, original sinful nature is seen in every single person. That is one cause for the division. 
the so called racism but the scripture does not promote racism we all are the offspring of adam then it came to noah from noah three sons and from that the entire world has come scripture is the one which throws light okay and now we will see so the scripture recommends us gives us the purpose for which the bible is given to us by god through holy spirit and it has been penned by his choice servants who are called the apostles and the prophets which recommends us to choose life we know not what life is because we prevail and we exist in the death we exist in the spiritual death our conscience is corrupted our mind is blindfolded by the adversary and our will we cannot think the way we supposed to think and we cannot act the way that we supposed to act in the light of the scripture so that is why it recommends us so so now john 20 21 if we happen to see but these are written so that you may you see i write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of god that you may know that you have eternal life why it is written for all those who believe this is from first john chapter 5 13 i write these things the purpose to you who believe in the name of the son of god the son of god is otherwise jesus the christ that you may know that you have life see all those who have believed in the son of god that is christ jesus the messiah we are now living in a period the nation israel they rejected the son of god jesus christ and they are in the verge of accepting the false messiah as the son of god and we are at the very end of the last days because in the last days we have crossed more than 2000 years see mankind from the time of creation he was given 7000 years in this we have already crossed 4000 years which is the old testament period and the new testament was a mysterious period so we have crossed another 2000 years these 2000 years is called the last days hebrew if you happen to see which very clearly says in these last days jesus manifested jesus spoke to mankind through various ways through prophets patriarchs and so on and in the last days he sent his only son jesus christ and he spoke to us that means 2000 years now we have crossed and more than 2000 years in the last days which is called the dispensation of grace or the dispensation of church era so church era also has come to end so we need to choose now anyone who has not received jesus christ now was the time if the global consequence of covid-19 we now were mankind in this era they never expected a kind of global phenomenon a pandemic of covid-19 this also covid-19 is a common one who made it a global one as a pandemic declaration yes that is also a man made so there is a purpose behind it that means we have come to the end this is also one of the signs of end that the god is closing in or the one world one world order is coming one world religion is coming we are approaching the end of the last days or end of end times now is the time that we have to look into that as we see to the people those who have believed in the son of god who is jesus christ emphasizing that they have the life eternal in jesus christ 
and also but this are written that so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ many people they are serving the lord jesus they simply call him jesus but he should not be called jesus only the bible emphasizes jesus is the christ it very clearly says whosoever believeth that jesus is the christ is born of god this is what exactly the primary meaning of being born again is believing jesus as christ that's what jesus very clearly emphasized with the nicodemus he did not believe he is a, one of the sanhedrin members supposed to teach the israelites that he is our messiah but he failed in that so he is a blind doctor he is the teacher of the law he was a blind he missed that messiah so jesus emphasized rather warn him you must be born again if you are not born of god then you cannot see the kingdom of god here it says believe that jesus is the christ let me read from john 11:27 she said to him yes lord i believe that you are the christ the son of god who is coming into the world who is that who is that you see very clearly this is about the resurrection and it is about the lazarus she was knowing that lazarus you know about lazarus lazarus was dead four days in the grave jesus came she was speaking all the doctrine of resurrection and everything but finally if you believe that i will come back i am the resurrections i can come back very then or now i am the resurrection lazarus come forth four days the body decayed you know if one who is buried in the tomb and after four days what will happen to the body so he just simply spoke to his spirit and soul lazarus come forth and he came back that is what jesus christ is so he said and she lazarus sister she said to him yes lord i believe that you are the christ the son of god who is coming into the world and if you happen to you are the christ the son of god who is coming into the world who who came 2000 years back and did the will of god that is he brought about salvation to the entire mankind so there is no other name given under heaven and above the earth for us to be called for salvation so that is why the salvation dispensational salvation is otherwise as many as those who call on the name of the lord jesus christ shall be saved just simply call on him and receive him as your lord and savior you shall be saved you will have the life and believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that by believing by believing and those in the boat worshiped him saying truly you are the son of god when even matthew 14 13 it very clearly says see what happened jesus walks on water that means jesus was walking on water you know having seen that disciples were crying out that the ghost on seeing on jesus walking on the water they saw him and they said oh behold there is a ghost jesus said fear not i am then peter a man fisherman he also walked together with christ on water okay and to them when he was taken inside the boat and they worshiped him so many people they question is he the son of god is he god can he be worshiped yes here the fisherman all whom jesus has chosen hand picked from the lower level bottom level of the society 
they worshipped him in the boat. Jesus did not deny worship. But you can see in the book of Revelation, when the angel came down from heaven, one of the same disciple, John, fell on his feet because the very appearance of heavenly glory will compel us to fall prostrate and worship. But the angel told John, don't do that. I am a servant like you. Worship God. So here, Jesus very clearly accepted worship even as a man because Jesus is God, man. 100% God, 100% man. There is no one like him in the entire universe or entire universe. Yeah. So, the Son of God and that by believing you may have life. See, that is what, have life. For this purpose the scripture is written. I will read out from John 3.15 that whoever believes in Jesus the Christ may have eternal life. Okay. And John 3.16 you can see for God so loved the world that he gave his only son Christ Jesus that whoever believes in him should not perish. So supposing you fail to relieve whichever religion you may be. Bible does not impress on any religion. Bible brings the truth. Jesus also said, I am the way, the truth and the life. These are the three questions very clearly answered. Mankind was pondering around what is the way to heaven and what is truth and what is life. But they are not accepting the definition. The definition for these three is a person who is Jesus, who is Jesus the Christ, is the definition. Why can't you up? The Greek philosophers, they don't accept it, even till the world is pondering about it. Instead of receiving the way, the truth and the life in Christ, they still reject him and still they are seeking the truth. So you may perish if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, you will believe eternally in hell. You cannot escape. Mankind was created to live forever. So the end result is either hell, fire or heaven. So in Christ you will not go to hell. It was not created for mankind but for devil and his angels. But failing to do that one, we will certainly go to hell along with the devil. But God's desire is for you is to choose life. To choose life is to believe in Jesus Christ. To believe in Jesus Christ is choosing life and getting into heaven and into everlasting life. For us, those who have chosen Christ, death is simply a threshold. We enter through it to the other side of heavenly glory or a sort of blissful eternity or uh, awful eternity which is in hell fire. So here very clearly, believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Eternal life is the one promise and also John 5.40 which talks about the Passover. Passover lamb even now, Jewish people, in order to commence the third temple, the Passover lamb has been already slain which is otherwise called the red heifer lamb. So that is also one of the evidence of the end days. So let us prepare, instead of following a religion, receive Christ and remain in him and abide in him. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. <coughs> Jesus says 540. When Jesus says 540, Ye search the scripture because you think that in the scripture you have eternal life. And it is they that bear witness about me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. Even today I heard there are people who are still talking. You search God. You search God. It could be a huge congregation. I was just listening. You search God. You see, that is 
I don't know, I don't understand. To me, it seemed to be something uh, alien teaching in the plenary inspiration of the scripture. Old Testament says, search God in the appropriate or more convenient time. But we belong to the New Testament that is under Christ. Christ has come. That means the God who asked you to seek came seeking us that is Jesus Christ. So you don't need to seek God. You receive God who came seeking mankind. This is the truth in the plenary inspiration. In the entirety of the scripture, if you see, you receive him. You don't need to seek any more God. Just simply receive God who came seeking you. So 540 we read and 653 also says, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So, from based on this, they have taken the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper, we have two elements, which has very specific, very specific doctrinal aspect. Why two elements? I'll talk to that on some other day why we have bread and wine what is the purpose of this so we need to understand so many would say if you do not partake in the holy communion you will not go to heaven and they think just simply taking a piece of bread and drinking a little wine which sanctifies you no it is the faith and the trust and the doctrinal aspect of it that cleanses you so you should understand the doctrine and then you observe it we have two doctrines or ordinance we can say one is the baptism another one is the lord's supper this has been taken out of seven there were a lot of sacraments and ordinances in the so-called uh, church setup which is roman catholicism and we have taken the most appropriate two but we should observe it in the reason of the truth and the fact behind it otherwise we will miss the truth and taking part in it has nothing to do with it but the truth behind it that matters to us so let us see so truly truly i say to you unless you eat the flesh jesus said the flesh the flesh that that is identifying with him we become one with him the son of man and drink his blood which is the propitiation for us which is the propitiation for us anytime you sin just go to the not willfully by mistake go and have your sins forgiven so that is why the blood is available and john 10 10 very clearly says this is also very important jesus said all those who came before me are thieves that is one brother came and asked me why did jesus say this all those who came before me are thieves yes many those who are serving god even these days or so i can say because other day that i saw one advertisement anyone who does not give the tithe they are thieves that is a very wrong statement here jesus says the thieves who comes to take you and to kill you and to destroy you he makes the difference between the devil and himself but i came that you may have life and progressively it can grow in that that's why i came that you may have life and have it more abundantly he said in the king james version that means you will have the life the moment you receive when you receive jesus christ into your life or when you identify with him the life comes into you you may think that why i already have the life the life that you have without christ is otherwise called the animal life which is present in the blood Leviticus 17.10 which was given for us for the sacrifice as an atonement one which was only a foreshadow 
but Christ life is a Zoe, a higher order life which descended from heaven and he himself is the life and he comes into us. He permeates our entire being, our spirit, soul and body and he abides with us. That's why he says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. This is John 10.10. 10. <coughs> so you may have life in his name. John is writing, if Jesus says you may have life in my name, Acts 10.43 it says, to him all the prophets, that is to Jesus the Christ, all the prophet bear witness that everyone who believes in him receive forgiveness of sin through his name. Forgiveness of sin is exactly the salvation. There is no other way for our sins to be forgiven. In Jesus Christ, our sins stand forgiven. It is a positional truth after the death and the resurrection and glorification of Jesus Christ. So to receive him is to receive the forgiveness of our sin. That is what exactly salvation. So uh, one First Corinthians chapter 6, 11 also says, and such were some of you. That means some of the people which it talks about, you see, uh, not thieves. There are so many, the greedy, the drunkards, the revilers and swindlers will, in, will not inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of Lord Jesus Christ by the Spirit of our God. So now we stand justified positionally in Jesus Christ. The entire human race so whether they receive or not, the fact and the truth remain so because he died, he tasted the death for every soul under the heaven and above the earth. The thing is, the final truth is whether a particular soul receives Christ as his Savior and Lord or not, that's what it matters. Religion has nothing to do with this. Sacrament and ordinance has nothing to do with this. Simply. As many as those who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is Old Testament also says in the book of Joel and Acts also says in the book of Acts chapter 2 and Romans chapter 10 again the same words is emphasized. Calling upon the Savior. As for me, the definition of salvation is the encounter between a sinner, a soul, a sinner and the Savior. When there is an encounter between the soul which is a sinner and the Savior, the salvation occurs. That is the forgiveness of the soul is affected in receiving Jesus the Christ. And Acts 3.6 also says, but Peter said, I have no silver or gold. When he was entering into the temple, there was a beautiful gate, but a man who was sitting there with the lame and he was a beggar he was begging he was anticipating expecting that something he will get to him peter answers i have no silver i have no gold thank god if he has silver or gold or even cash he might have given it i have no silver and no gold apostles they have but today's preacher they travel in uh, flight and this and that and so many things they are expecting. Those days they don't have even a single coin, apostles. To them he says, I have no silver and gold, but what I do have, I give it to you. This is the importance of the preachers. Oh preachers, today you are preaching. Do you have Jesus in you to give it to the one who is begging from you for something to fill his stomach? Here you see what the first apostles did. But what I do have, I give it to you. Today, many of them, they do not have this. They have silver and gold and coin, purse full of money, but they don't have Jesus. That is why they are speaking on the subject of prosperity. Rendathanayai inde asirvadipar. Adha inde kodupar. Poor guys the hearers are the poor guys okay and they become rich and this becomes lower and lower and lower 
poor and poorest and that is how this happened in the name of Jesus Christ according to his command you know what did Jesus said all authority is given unto me hence you go the authority is in his name it is invested authority is not given to me but when I use his name his name has authority but today they think even in the churches and other area they exercise authority as if authority is handed over to him no even today the authority is invested only in the name of Jesus Christ so in his name we have to go that's what he says in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk you you can go you can read the left and he immediately received the life the dead bones and ligaments and everything gave way and he jumped up and he walked with them into the temple so anyone who want to serve the Lord God and Jesus Christ must have Jesus Christ in them having Jesus Christ is having life in themselves <coughs> today now we are living in the period the REM <coughs> of pandemic REM or the shadow of death has overshadowed the entire globe and in such a time that we do we have to pray we can give Christ Jesus giving Christ Jesus is giving them life those who are prevailing in death so let us do that graciously hopefully and encourage them that is what it's see now the one promise in the scripture you can have all of them you can have the entire world but if you fail to have this promise alas you are dead so the one promise is this one see and this is the promise that God made to us which is eternal life you can have all the promises fulfilled but if you fail to have this promise you are nowhere so this is the promise that is eternal life which is this is the promise singular promise that pops up or stand up stand out of the scripture and comes to us is eternal life so this particular eternal life is personified to a person eternal life eternal life what is that eternal life the eternal life is nothing but jesus the christ i'll read out please carefully follow and we know that the son of god has come 1 john 5 20 has come and has given us understanding that means if son of god has not come we have no understanding of eternal life so that he has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true and we are in him who is true in his son jesus the christ he is the true god and eternal life he is the true God and eternal life. Jesus the Christ is the true God and eternal life. This is how we read the Bible. Many people they ask, especially people, though, though many Muslims. I have a lot of Islamic friends over the period of 40 years. Everyone asks me, did Jesus, is Jesus God? I have given them enough of evidence. When they ask me, I told them Jesus is the end of everything. We don't need any more prophet. Even we don't need any more religion. Even Islam we don't need. Even Christianity you don't need. It's enough if you have Christ Jesus. Why you need a religion? Now we could not go to church. So are you in Christ? That is all sufficient. Being in Christ is being in the body of Christ. Christ himself is the church. And you are the church, wherever two or three gather in my name, that is a church. Graciously. Yes, that is the truth. So, in his son Jesus Christ, he is the true God and eternal life. I hope you understand the word personification, personified truth. The way to heaven is a personified. The truth is personified because he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And the life is also personified Jesus Christ so receiving Jesus Christ is receiving eternal life that is why John again he writes anyone who has Jesus Christ or the Son of God has life 
or even the Passover lamb when it is cut, it says you are crossing over, passing over from death into life. That is Jesus the Christ, which is Zoe. So the the high priest prayer when Jesus was making, I'll read this and I'll finish here. The high priestly prayer is John 17, the entire. You can read and study on that. When he prays, begins he begins this way. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. See, that Jesus Christ is glorifying the Father through his death because for that purpose he came down. He did not come to perform miracle. That's why when I began, Jesus did many miracles, but those are not written. If it is to be written, the whole world cannot contain. So what is written is for the purpose that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, believing so you may have life. So Father, the hour has come, glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given your Son authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. See, Jesus, when he prays, he says, if you have believed in Christ, that means it is the Father God has picked you up and given to Jesus Christ as a gift to his Son. So you see how gracious God is. So believing in Jesus Christ has a great impact in your life. It is Father's choice as a gift to Jesus Christ for what he has done whom you have given me and this is eternal life that they may know as many as whom you have given me may know you the only true God and Jesus the Christ whom you have sent so eternal life is Jesus Christ himself and yet you can grow in that because after all we are trying to become like Jesus Christ that is the ultimatum so when he appear in mid heaven we will meet him in his similitude first john chapter 3 verse 1 and 2 so anyone who has this hope sanctify himself in spirit and in soul and in body this is a progressive truth sanctification is a progressive truth and also holiness is applicable in three manners a positional truth, practical truth, and a perfect truth. So sanctify yourself, wait for the coming of the Lord, so that you will be one like Jesus when he appears in mid heaven. So stay blessed in Jesus' name. So may God bless you. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I pray for all those who have been watching and all those who are going to watch in the days to come. Bless everyone. Draw them closer to you. Yes, Lord, reveal yourself to them. You are a God who reveals yourself to many. So I pray that there may be a great revival across the globe for the sake of the gospel because there is no other good news during this time except Jesus the Christ who is life himself. So let them stay blessed in your name for your glory. For thine is the kingdom power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May God bless you.